Thank you very much, Sharanjit. One of the things that needs to be repeatedly said that one of the unintended, I suppose, or dangerous consequences of Islamophobia is that often Sikhs in America also become victims of Islamophobic violence. Uh, so, so I kind of like the word turban phobia. Uh, uh, for an average uninformed American, a Sikh looks like bin Laden or Ayatollah Khomeini, uh, the modern sources of uh, modern <laughs> Islamophobia in the United States. Thank you very much, Charanjit. Uh, our last speaker today is Imam Ali. And after his thoughts, we will, he will also close the session with prayer. Uh, if you look at your map, uh, if you look at your map, we have uh, uh, marked out breakout sessions, which will be starting at 12:30. Uh, and uh, we, when you see these orange places, that's where you will also be able to go and get your lunch. Uh, and uh, and for those of you who would like to offer the Zohar prayers, the green prayer area is also marked on the map, so make sure you have this all day with you. So our last speaker, Imam Ali. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, with the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, I seek refuge in Allah from the rejected enemy, Ahmed Dear beloved people, we're certainly appreciative that you're here today, and we certainly thank the host for holding this type of meeting and we pray, God willing, that you go home with something that will better your lives and the lives of others, which is the uh, goal of this particular uh, session that we're having. Um, quickly, we have about seven minutes to wrap up of seven hour presentations, but we're gonna do it in that time. Now, this is voluntarily. How many of you occasionally attend a county council meeting? Any hands? How many of you occasionally attend a city council meeting? Uh, the police and also uh, others hold information meetings that you can attend to find out how they're doing or what they're doing. How many attend that? Okay, now the FBI, I know this by experience, said if you call them, they'll come and present you uh, things that they're doing. So are any organization here, have you ever called the FBI to come in and brief you? All right, we're gonna take you to another example here so we can get to the blunt of what we're trying to say. Uh, now we're going back to the kindergarten or first grader or whatever, and if you uh, show them or draw a clock, just a picture of a clock, they'll know that that's a clock. And some of them even know the numbers on it, later on they'll begin to tell the time. But if you ask them, how did this clock operate? How does it function? They can't tell you because they don't know. And it's the same way with us. If we don't engage the people who govern us, the people who protect us with law and order and the court system, which does the final thing in the justice system, uh, then we're not fulfilling our social responsibility of engaging these people. So. And even if you go to city council meetings, you go to these meetings, you really don't know how they operate because just like in the NFL or NBA, no coach is gonna show you their playbook and they will not show you your playbook. So the way they operate and the way they do things is something that we have to know because if we don't know this, then people who lobby them for their cause will get what they want and they will be left out. So our responsibility as a social responsibility as citizens is to engage the people who govern us and as I say, protect us with law and order and with the court system. And all of this, I'm saying, has nothing to do with race as perceived by most people, all people. Now, this is a very, very, very critical topic for all of us to know and understand if we're gonna use our intellect to gain the bounty that's here in America for all human beings. Because there are some unique things here in America, but you have to be equipped with the right type of thinking and the right type of mental frame of reference or information and understanding that does not place you in conflict or contradiction with your own self as a human being. 
Because if you do, then your own negative behavior will take you out of the competition or the race to compete in this country. America is not a country of race and racism, but a country of a diversity of God-created human beings. And as we said before, words make people, but words can also break people and destroy people. So if you allow people to use words that you don't understand, they might destroy you. People from all over the world come to America to compete in a race, and the race is not ethnic, it's a race for all that is good. And if you look at this race issue in any other way, then you have taken yourself out of the race or have allowed somebody else thinking to put you out of the race for all the competition that is good in this country. Our founding fathers put in the Constitution of America, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And take a moment for this just because it's not been uh, what it should be. And this word men, if you put W-O in the front of it, you have women. And then even man, you put W-O in it, you have a uh, 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 woman. And this woe, in a sense, means like you're, you're riding a horse and you want to stop it or go in another direction. What do you say? Whoa, whoa, you know? So this woe is that women are telling you, we are part of this thing also, men, so let us be involved. So therefore, the societal order has not had that inclusion like they should, but we're getting to that. So this very statement that all men are created equal and they are endowed by their creator, creator with certain unalienable rights. Now this in itself is a religious or faith-based statement, but it's religious and you can't take that into the court system or, or what rules over us or governs us as something, as an entry into a case that may be going on because uh, whatever happens in the courts is based on law. And that's why you take a lawyer to court because it's based on law. But in this country, it's a separation of church and state. So you can't take, well, I know that's not right. I know that that's wrong. You can't take that kind of uh, conversation into a court of law because it's not accepted. Even the word justice, what we're talking about, is not allowed in a courtroom because justice really is, is, is an abstract word. It's an abstract. It's something had to be proven. If you go to court for a case, then after it's over, then you have to come out and wonder, did I get justice? Because it's not involved in the court of law. And we look at this woman in Kentucky, I think most of you who stood up when they asked her to sign off on something that she said her religion did not believe in. And they said that you have to sign off on this because you signed on for us to do this. And she said, I'm not going to go to war with my Lord signing off on this. You can put me in jail, do whatever you do, but I'm not going to sign off this. She was a faith-based person and she stood her ground. And eventually, she didn't have to quit, she didn't have to resign. They found other means legally to get the process of what uh, uh, this particular situation was trying to do. So social justice cannot be legislated, but the people who serve us, and this came up early in the speakers, they're supposed to be civil servants. In other words, they're supposed to be civilized and also serve us. But most people don't perceive them at that. But we as faith-based people, we are human beings. We're supposed to be merciful, compassionate, tolerant, forgiving, flexible. And all these are some of the attributes that God has put in the human being in order for us to uh, be sociable with each other. And one of the things I like when I went to motor vehicle that they have a little meter after they service you for what are you there for, they have a little point you to a little electronic thing there. You have to push a button whether their service was good, were excellent, good, poor, or just disgusting. And 
this monitors them and makes them have accountability. So there, they, they treat people nice. And this is something that all government officers somewhere where they're dealing directly with the public should have some kind, of, kind of system where there's accountability right at that particular point. So we as faith-based people, we have to lobby those who govern us on these ingredients as a human being that's in them that God put him to at least make the playing field level so it would not be just justice or for just us, it would be for everybody. So, <clears throat> but God has given us, each one of us, as children of Adam, our own way and our own law to allow us to compete in a right or righteous way. The Muslim uses the Quran, the Christian uses the New Testament, the Jewish people use the Torah, the Buddhists use their book, the Hindu use their book, the Sikh use their book, and the atheist uses their own mind. So let us all compete to see who is best in conduct and see who is best in the pursuit for good for all humanity in a race that is, that is good for everybody. Oh God, we seek refuge from anxiety and grief. We seek refuge from lack of strength and laziness. We seek refuge from cowardice and neglectedness. We seek refuge from the overpowering of debt and the oppression of men. Oh God, bless us that is lawful and keep us from that which is prohibited. And with thy grace, make us free of want of what is besides thee. Amin, amin, rabbi lai, amin.